Hey there, Life Group leaders. Uh, Paul and Karen here, and uh, we are excited to uh, share these moments with you. We're going to be doing this over the course of the summer, and hopefully all of you received this book. And if you didn't, then we need to get in touch with Ellie quickly so you can get yours. But during the summer, we're going to be uh, spending some time going through each of the chapters. Once a week, we're going to uh, just talk a little bit about each of them because we want to grow you. We want to disciple you and help you to become better life group leaders um, because you're pastors, so extended pastors for us, that you're able to shepherd those individuals who connect with you in life groups. And so that's the goal of this. So each week, we're going to just share a little bit about each of the chapters here. And eventually, in the fall, what are we going to be doing, Karen? In the fall, we're going to do a... Um life group leader retreat it'll probably just be a day so we won't be asking a lot of your time but and we'll get that date to you soon as soon as we pick it um but we just want to have a day where we pour into you where we come together as life group leaders and kind of brainstorm and visualize and just talk about what this year is going to be for life groups and for you um but like paul said we see you as pastors in this congregation and you ha- each have a small church, it's your life group, your circle, that you are called to pastor. And so we are called to pastor you. And so we want to be here to pour into you and to encourage you as life group leaders, grow you. Um, and this is just a first step in that journey. So we're going to be making these videos every week. Today, <clears throat> we're going to be looking at chapter one of this great book. And uh, we're excited about this book as Karen and I have started to <laughs> dig into it ourselves. There's a lot of good stuff in here. So today, the uh, the first book is think, or the first chapter is think great thoughts. And I don't know about you, Karen, but I love that concept of thinking great thoughts because uh, to think bad thoughts is not a good thing. It's going to just cause me to be grumpy, and I don't think you like me when I'm grumpy. Mm-hmm. It goes back to that like really old garbage in, garbage out, that gigo thing from computer programming decades ago, right? Garbagey. We put garbage in, we're going to get garbage out. Our life is going to be garbage. So thinking great thoughts, putting good things into our minds is so important. I love this. Yeah. And I had a seminary professor that did this with us. Like every week he would have us memorize a different great thought. And a couple of those I still practice today. For instance, one of the great thoughts that I just love to use for me is before I do as a pastor, before I do the work of the Lord, I want to acknowledge the Lord of the work. And that's just still huge for me. I, I want to make sure I'm in my daily devotions so that when I come to work, I'm not just going through the motions. And so that's just a great thought that I just still apply to my life on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's dig into this chapter a little <clears throat> bit. Um, we're just going to pick out some key things. And each one of these videos may look entirely different. Um, but for this time, we're just going to pick out some key thoughts that we thought he hit on that were really important that we just want to expound upon or reiterate. Um, and the first thing here was he talked on page 24 about Philippians 4.8. Um, and this verse has been really transformational for me. I read a book that kind of focused on this verse years ago um, with a ladies group I was leading, and I absolutely love it. So I didn't want to miss this part. But uh, Philippians 4.8, as it's quoted in the text here, says, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. First thing I would say is uh, pull out a couple different Bibles or jump on your phone and look at a couple different translations of that verse because they change a couple of those words there and just every one of those words is so powerful and in helping us to think great thoughts. Yeah. Um, And I think overarching for this verse is just that first phrase, whatever is true. And I think that there's so many times um, that we get caught up, even as Christians, in thinking on things that just aren't true. Um, Maybe it's um, something that a parent has said to you in the past. You're such a loser or you'll never amount to anything. And that is absolutely not true. That's not who God created you to be. Therefore, that's not true. It may be their opinion and a very wrong one at that. But we get these things that we just play over and over and we think over and over in our minds that are not at all true. Um, Or we start, for me, worry about the future, right? Well, what if this happens? Well, what if that happens? And we start playing these what if games with our brains. 
And um, something that I've learned is when we're playing the what if game, we're not thinking on what's true because it hasn't happened. So it is not truth. So I love that this verse just kind of starts us on we need to be in the word. We need to know what is true, what God says about us, what God says about life so that we can recognize truth. Um, But then we just need to constantly be evaluating our thoughts and thinking, you know, is this TV show that I'm watching, is that speaking truth to me? If not, I shouldn't be thinking on it, right? Is this Facebook feed or this Twitter feed, whatever these people are posting, and we just get all gung-ho about these thoughts that people are posting, but then when we stop and think about it, this is not truth. Yeah, and it has to do with, you know, what are we feeding our mind? And he looks at that on page 28 uh, of the book, and, and the whole idea of, you know, Karen, just think of all those different things that she mentioned that many of us are allowing to feed us every single day, whether it's social media, a lot of us spend time on Facebook, a lot of us spend time on Twitter, a lot of us spend time uh, checking out YouTube and all those different aspects of the social media that's out there that are just constantly feeding our brain. And if that's what's feeding us, wow, or we're missing a lot of other good stuff that we could have feeding us. Yeah, and if we, so we just go back to that list from Philippians, right? Is this honorable? Is this right? Is this pure? Is this lovely? Is this admirable? Is this excellent? Like if we just go back and kind of look at the things that we're using to feed our brains, the things that we're thinking on constantly, if we can't hold it up to that list, then should it be part of our mental diet? Should it be part of what we're consuming visually or with our brains, with our spirits? Because if we keep eating junk food, we're going to get fat. And if we keep feeding our brains junk, our brains turn to mush and our spirit turns to mush. We become less sensitive to God if our diet is crappy. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think about, you know, conversations that Karen and I have had with our teenage kids and just, you know, some of the things that they have in their brain already because of some of those things that they have watched as part of the teenage culture right now. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, we're already seeing that with some of them and having to have re-talks with them and helping them to put different thoughts, true thoughts, into their brain. And so mm-hmm. we have to find them and work with our teenagers in that. But we adults, boy, we've had a lot of those things already pouring into our brains. And so how do we refocus mm-hmm. on good thoughts, on true thoughts, on excellent thoughts, honorable mm-hmm. thoughts? And if anything, you know, they're saying now that, and we're just going to use social media as an example because it's so pervasive, But, um, you know, they're saying that we're the most depressed and anxious generation that's ever lived, and they're slowly attributing that more and more to social media, Um, partly because of the negativity there. People are just such haters, but partly because um, what is posted on social media isn't true, right? So your marriage could be falling apart, but all you post are these beautiful pictures of your family doing picnics and going to parks and doing all these awesome things causes a lot of jealousy and um, just people seeing an untrue version. So, um, And then when the truth comes out that it's actually different from that, it's devastating <laughs> to everybody because yeah. they were just so confused by what they were seeing yeah. Yeah. as untrue. So just um, things for us to keep in mind, you know, that we are um, wise consumers of whatever it is that we're consuming, that we go into it knowing that a lot of times, especially in social media, what's being posted isn't true. I even said that about the news the other day, remember? I do. Um, there was some report and it was talking about how skewed our news channels are. And I said, how do we even know what to believe anymore? Um, because so much of what the media tells us is very skewed or slanted in one way or another from their perspective sure yeah so i guess the question is then you know knowing that there's all this other garbage sometimes that's going into our brains how do we fight back on that how what are those places that we can go to for getting good thoughts into our brain and he has a good list here Mm -hmm. uh, as he writes uh, that uh, can help us if we take those initiatives and do some things you know for instance scripture that's an obvious one uh, hopefully for us as christians that an obvious one is to get some scripture memorized. And for there are some people that think, I can't memorize scripture, but isn't it amazing how we have all these other things memorized in our brain? So why can't we memorize scripture? And just a couple that, that I have, Karen, you know, I, you know Psalm 15, uh, not to us, not to us, O Lord, but to you be the glory because of your love and your faithfulness. Uh, it just reminds me of just how God loves me and how I want God to receive the glory for the moments of the day. 
Just one like that is just, for me, is a powerful one. Another one is in that Philippians chapter 4, we've taught our kids this one, and they've memorized this one. Uh, Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace that transcends understanding will rest on our hearts and minds. So those are a couple for me that Mm -hmm. I have in here, and they're practical for me. I know you have others. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but let's jump to this list here on page 36. I think you jumped ahead. Did I jump list. ahead? I yeah. do that. We'll get there. But <laughs> you'll get there. But let's just talk because I want to kind of go through this. Um, as life group leaders, starting on page 36, he talks about key area key areas for cultivating great thoughts. The first one is thinking about great thoughts about God, and the second one is thinking great thoughts about yourself. So I want us to get super practical here and talk how do we do this as life group leaders? Right. So the first thing I loved that out of the box sermon series that we did this spring that Paul did, you know, those couple of weeks there where we just we're talking about getting God out of the box. And I think so often our view of God is we have created God in our image. Right. So we think of ourselves and we think of what's good in us. And then we think, well, God's just a little bit better. And so that gets back to the scripture, yeah. but um, cultivating good, great thoughts about God as life group leaders. We need to know God and we need to know how huge, how immense, how perfect, how amazing he is so him. that we can share that with our life groups. So thinking great thoughts about God and then thinking great thoughts about yourself. We need to have confidence as life group leaders to know God has called me to this. God is going to equip me for this. And I can do this because I've got God on my side. So just, I think as a life group leader, believing this is where I've been called in this church and I'm going to rock this. I think part of that is remembering that the the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit is in you and with you, and that you're not alone in this. And when when you don't have you know either Pastor Mike or Pastor Karen or someone there with you, that's okay because God is with you, and that's a great thought to have as support for you in this. Mm-hmm. Thinking great thoughts about others is another one. And that's where you look at your circle that you have there that God has given to you. I mean, this is where you now get to be a steward of those, the circle that God has given to you. Think great thoughts about them. Look at every one of them and just understand, you know, how much of you heard Pastor Mike and I say this, that we want you to understand that who you were created to be in God. And you can look at them and understand God has created them to be special and blessed and and loved. And you get to help them to know that as well. Mm -hmm. Thinking great thoughts about life is next. And I think um, one of the things that great life groups do is they do life together, right? So great life groups are involved in each other's lives. They celebrate together. They worship together. They play together. They eat together. They do all these things. And so just having that mentality of I get to do life with these people. We get to do this together. But what is our purpose in this? It's not just community, but our purpose in this is that we're going to grow together towards God and we're going to exalt him and glorify him as a group. And so just thinking about that and our purpose as a life group, that we come together to worship God, to praise him and to show him, um, to grow together in him. I just think that's that's an awesome thing about life groups is that that's what it's called, a life group. We do life together. together. There's a purpose in this group. And if you haven't reached that point in being a life group, then maybe this is the semester where you guys start to do that a little bit more, where you aren't just a once a week getting together, but where you are involved in each other's lives, where you're calling your members, where you're talking to each other. You know, this week, three, four, I don't know, a bunch of kids from our life group are all going to be in Newsies production. So what's going to happen? But a lot of our life group will be there. We're going to show up and support them. So um, that's thinking great things about life. The next two you can kind of talk about together. Yeah, it's, it talks about having great thoughts about the future and the past. And then you can do that together as a life group as you celebrate, again, things in your past that maybe you had a struggle with a life group, maybe someone had a health issue, and you can look back to that and say, look where we've come, mm-hmm. and then look to the future and say, what's the goal for our life group? You know, for if you have some people that are going through some tough things financially or relationally, what's the goal? What's the future? What can it look like a year from now? Hope. <laughs> if we, yeah, hope is such a big thing. And so to share both looking at the past and the future is such a powerful thing mm-hmm. to do together as a life group. And then that last one is thinking great thoughts about challenges, and that's kind of what you're saying, but... When we come together as a life group here, I think we have such power 
because we don't face challenges alone. alone. And so that's where the power of life group and doing life together is, you know, when we had life group members that had a huge life change and they were moving, our life group rallied around them and they didn't go through that alone. We packed that. I packed their kitchen. We filled their truck. We took it to the storage. We put it back in the truck. We sent them off, you know. So when you're going through those challenging times, thinking great thoughts, not only is God with us, but we are with each other. I think that's huge. Through all those different kinds yeah. of challenges that there are. Okay. Gonna, now we can get to the end where you're talking about memorizing scripture. See, I was just so much more I know. forward than I know. you. Yes. You're so much forward thinking. Yes, yeah. I am. So again, scripture. I, you know, Karen, you heard some of mine. Do you mm-hmm. have one in particular that you, that just jumps out at you? Oh gracious! Well, I love a lot of scriptures. I know you do. Second Corinthians four eighteen talks about fixing our minds on the Lord and not being focused on what's going on here. And so, you know, that one to me is one. You know, we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And so, to me, that's hope and that's forward thinking. That's exactly you know what we need to be doing. It just reminds me, mm-hmm. it's this thing, thinking great thoughts. I need to think about God and not about the yuck that's going on around me. And it's so much fun for me then to take, you know, certain parts of scripture and make them practical. You know, one of the things that Pastor Mike and I have talked about in, in sermons when talking about marriage relationships is the whole submission competition. And you and I joke about that sometimes, but yet it's not just a joke. It's it's a life thing that we're, we take that part of scripture and we talk about the submission competition of how we both want to just submit to one each other out of you know God's love for us. We want to do that for each other, and so to allow those pieces of scripture to become practical in our lives, and we let that happen. Yeah, I love that he talks about you know we need to see what what fits your personality and lifestyle, yep. right? But um, for me, out of his list, we're on page forty two and forty three now. Out of his list here, he talks about using your drive time and listening to great music. And for me, I love to combine those. I mean, I listen to great music all throughout Non-stop. the day. <laughs> all throughout the day. We pay for Spotify so that, you know, our kids have access to good music, but so that I do as well. And I listen to Spotify all day long. Um, but that's a way for me to use my drive time as well. I've just started getting into podcasts. I thought they'd be boring. I've found some that I like, so I'm starting to use that too, but trying to um, use my drive time either to just set my mo- my mental state like on focusing on God and worshiping or um, to learn. So those are ways that I can think great thoughts are just putting good music into my brain. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and take walks in nature. That's one that just really kicks me. I just I just love being out in nature. I love, and, and for me, it doesn't have to be out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, for me, just walking around town, even you know, going for a walk down the blocks, I just mm-hmm. love seeing nature. You know, if a rabbit runs in front of me, I just appreciate that. If I get to see you know, some birds flying around, I just love that. I just love seeing God's creativity and seeing how God just reminds me of, of how awesome He really is. And so I just love that part that He mentions. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the chapter, there were some questions for um, reflection, which I think are great for you to just engage with this chapter a little bit more. Maybe if you're a couple who leads a life group, this would be a great chance for you two to discuss what you're reading together. Um, but then I really want to challenge you on 44 and 45, this live it out section to take those two things. They're not hard. One is just reading through uh, Romans chapter eight a few times this week. And focusing on that. And then the other one is taking a walk out in nature, getting outside. Maybe it's in the evening and sitting outside under the stars. Or um, yesterday I was outside with the kids and we were just laying on the trampoline watching the clouds. So whatever it is, get out in nature. Find some time this week to do that. Read Romans chapter 8. Just continue to engage with this and train yourself to be thinking great thoughts. We love you, Life Group Leaders. Uh, You are a major part of what new life is about and our future moving forward, we won't be able to move forward without you continuing to grow in your faith and continuing to grow in how you are leading our life groups. So we're gonna continue to pour into you. We are gonna love sharing this with you. And so we're gonna be praying for you a lot. So have fun, read your, keep reading your book, and we'll see you next week. Uh, We're gonna come back. Next week will be shorter, promise. Yeah, so uh, but next week (laughs) we're gonna be looking at uh, the whole idea of reading great books. Mm. So check that out. We'll see you next week. See ya.